Ever since mid-January, when both Kenanisa Bekele and Eliud Kipchoge announced their plans to compete in the London Marathon 2020, many people around the world have been building it up as the race of the century. This race has been extremely hyped up due to the amazing seasons that Bekele and Kipchoge had last year, as Kipchoge became the first person ever to break two hours in a marathon where he ran 159.40 in the Ineos Breaking 2 Challenge in Vienna. And Bekele ran the second fastest official marathon time in history, where he completed the marathon distance in 2.01.41 in Berlin, finishing just a mere two seconds off Kipchoge's official world record. This race was originally scheduled for April, but due to the Covid pandemic it had to be postponed until October in order to keep everyone safe. The organisers also had to make the marathon elite only in the best interest of everyone's health, running a virtual marathon in a location of their choice for the non-elite runners. If you want to find out more about the ins and outs of the London Marathon, be sure to check out my video titled What to Expect from the London Marathon 2020. Just a few days before the race, the majority of the athletes would have been in peak condition, rested and ready to race. However, this wasn't the case for Bekele. I am very disappointed that I cannot race on Sunday. I was in good shape, but then I picked up a niggle in my left calf after two fast training sessions too close together in the last weeks of preparation. I have been having treatment every day since then and I truly believe I'd be ready but today it is worse and I now know I cannot race on it. This race was so important to me. This is truly devastating for Bekele who has obviously been training very hard for the past couple of months in order to be in peak condition. But with Bekele now out of contention that means that Kipchoge was a clear favourite to win the race outright. However, before Kipchoge and co took to the road, the women's race went off, with the likes of Bridget Koskai, the marathon world record holder, Ruth Chepengetic, the world champion, and Vivian Chariot, who has an amazing PB of 2.18.31, would all be competing to win the London Marathon and hopefully break the world record. In my opinion, Bridget Koskai was a clear favourite to take the crown, as she is a reigning champion of the London Marathon and has a truly incredible personal best of 2.14.04. As the race went on, there was a big lead group containing the likes of Bridget Koskai, Ruth Chepengetic, along with the two Brits, Steph Twell and Natasha Cochram. And by this point, almost all the runners looked comfortable, which is to be expected at an early point in a marathon. But by the time the lead group went through 30 minutes, it was much smaller, containing only three runners other than the Pacers. Those runners were Koskai, Chepengetic and Valerie Gemelli. Bridget Koskai and Ruth Chepengetic were looking quite comfortable at this point, which wasn't the case for Jameli, who looked like she was struggling. After this, Jameli didn't last much longer with the lead group, as by 55 minutes she had been dropped by Bridget and Ruth, leaving just them and one pacer out in front. It then looked like a battle for first place between Ruth and Bridget, as they were both going strong and looking very comfortable, putting more distance between the chase group each passing stride. As the two went through the halfway mark, it looked as though Chepengetic started to make a move, putting a 4 or 5 metre gap between her and Koskai, which was the only part so far where we'd seen Koskai put under the slightest bit of pressure. However, Bridget reacted extremely well to this, as she caught back up with Ruth in a matter of seconds. Recently the pace had been slowing slightly, and it looked like Chepengetic was trying to quicken the pace back up a bit, so a world record was still in the picture. But this surge must have fatigued Ruth quite a bit, as with just five laps to go, Bridget Koskai had dropped Trepengetic, who was clearly struggling. From then on, Koskai powered through her last five laps, leaving Ruth in her dust, while remarkably still looking very comfortable. It was then inevitable that Bridget Koskai was going to be crowned the London Marathon 2020 champion, and the question was about who was going to take second place. Chep and Getich had around a minute gap between her and Sarah Hall, who was running the race of her life and getting quicker all the time. She was closing the gap at an amazing speed, and Ruth looked very fatigued, but there was so little distance left, so it looked like Chep and Getich was going to hold out. Meanwhile, the gap between Chep and Getich and Koskai was still opening up, and Bridget looked very smooth as she closed in on the finish, while still looking comfortable and she stayed that way right until the end, as she crossed the finish line in a remarkable time of 2.18.58. This time was not as quick as originally expected, but it was still a good time, and one to be very proud of by Bridget Koskai, especially considering the poor weather conditions. But as Koskai cooled down, there was still a race going on between Sarah Hall and Ruth Chepengetic. Sarah Hall had very impressively closed a huge gap down to around 30 or 40 metres. But with just over 100 metres to go, it looked like Ruth was just about going to hold on. But Sarah didn't give up there, 
closing down on Ruth and the finish line with an amazing finishing kick, closing the gap extremely quickly as she passed Chep and Getich, she simply couldn't respond, allowing Sarah Hall to take second place. This showed how the speed of Bridget Koskai took it all out of Chep and Getich to the point where she could no longer respond to Sarah Hall. This must have been very disappointing for Chep and Getich, but she ran her heart out and was unlucky to miss out on a silver medal. And in other news, Natasha Cockrum overset a huge deficit to come from behind and overtake Naomi Mitchell and crowned herself the fastest British woman in the London Marathon 2020 in a very fast time of 2.33.19. But now that the women's race was over, it was now time for the men's race with the pre-race favourites of Muley Washihun, Mozanet Gerenu and last but definitely not least, Eliud Kipchoge were ready to take the London Marathon by storm. After Kenanisa Bekele dropped out of the race just a few days before, Kipchoge was now the clear favourite to come out victorious and possibly set a new world record. But nobody would predict what would happen next. As the race went off, Elliot was out front pushing the pace alongside the pacers, who were projected to go through the half marathon mark at 61 minutes, which would leave the competitors in a brilliant position to take down Kipchoge's world record of 2.01.39. This would result in an average pace of 4.38 minute miles or 2 minutes and 54 seconds a kilometre. This would be an unimaginable prospect for most runners including elites, but for Kipchoge this is normally like a Sunday stroll in the park. However, at just a mile in they were already falling slightly behind pace as they went through at 4.43 which was 5 seconds behind what was expected. Originally, they were projected to go through 10k in a time of 28.47, but as they went through at 29.45, nearly one minute behind pace, the prospect of a world record was looking less likely by the minute. At this point, you would expect the pacers to react and attempt to quicken the pace, but the race continued to go in the same direction, as they went through the half marathon mark at 62 minutes and 54 seconds, which is a huge two minutes behind pace. This works out to an average pace of 4.48 minute miles or 2.59 minute kilometres which is a whole 10 seconds a mile slower than required. With a much slower pace than expected, this then paved the way for someone to cause an upset and possibly overthrow the great Elliot. However, by the 1 hour and 50 minute mark, Elliot once again took the lead, all the while looking very strong and comfortable. This looked as if Kipchoge was going to blow the race wide open, separating the men from the boys. But sadly, Kipchoge just didn't have anything left, which showed as Shura Kitata kicked with 5k to go and Elliot simply couldn't respond as he was separated from the lead pack. After these very strange events, there were five competitors in contention, including Mozanek Gerenu, Shura Kitata and Kipchumba. With Kipchoge now out of the picture, it was all up for grabs, but nobody seemed willing to go all in and take the race into their own hands. For a second, it looked like Kipchoge could possibly make the comeback of dreams in what would live up to the billing as the race of the century. But Kitata made sure that this was not going to happen, as with just over a mile to go, he made a strong surge, leaving just him, Vincent Kipchumba, and Lemmy Cisse still in contention. And after 26 miles of racing, it all came down to a sprint finish. Originally it looked like Vincent Kipchumba might take it, but once again Kitata showed amazing strength to hold Kipchumba and Cisse and take first place. Kipchoge then went on to finish in 8th place, however he spoke to an interviewer afterwards where he showed his disappointment and also revealed that he had a blocked ear which prevented him from performing in his usual manner. I'm sorry about this, but that's how sport is. The last 5k I discovered something is wrong, my legs are not moving, my ear is totally blocked. I tried to keep going and I tried to finish, but ultimately he held his head high and accepted that this just wasn't his day. This is a great lesson to young athletes that you cannot always win. Sometimes you have to accept defeat and come back stronger next time, as I'm sure Kipchoge will for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. In other news, Jonathan Meller was the first British finisher in an amazing time of 2.10.38, as both he and Ben Connor finished within the Olympic qualifying time. Anyway, that was a truly astonishing London Marathon 2020 and one to be remembered for a long time. But that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you wouldn't mind subscribing, that would be great.